Oh, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Today we're going to be doing a solo run through of Natillion by Z Man Games. Now, this is part of the Oniverse game series, which is a collection of single player style uh, games with very different mechanics, but similar art, similar design, um, really lovely, lovely things to get your hands on. Now, this game thematically is the story of uh, the Dark House which is right here, who is coming up from the depths with their ship, the Phantom, and the Nautilion, which is coming from the Pleasant Isles and going down this track that will actually create by randomly shuffling and mixing up these crew tokens and placing them in a pattern moving down the board. So the goal of this game is to go step by step by assigning dice that you roll to each three of our playing units, the Dark House, the Nautilion, and the Phantom, and moving or resolving those dice rolls every turn. As I move down the board, I'll collect crew members, I'll fill up my ship, I'll spend my lucky charms, and hopefully I'll make it to the end, I'll make it to the Abyss, before the Phantom makes it to the Pleasant Isles. And if I make it to the Abyss before the Phantom makes it to the Pleasant Isles, and I have a full crew, I'll win the game. So I've finished setting up my player board here and I'll tell you a little bit about what you'll see. Here is my ship and my crew quarters. As I move along this track, I'll collect a crew member and I'll start placing it in my ship. Wherever I place crew members, it has to be connected to another existing crew member by this pipeline, this orange pattern that you see across the vessel. I also have uh, these four Lucky Charm tokens up here in the top. Um, now these Lucky Charm tokens allow me to do different things. I can spend one to reroll three dice. I can spend two to turn one dice to any number that I'd prefer, and I can spend another two to move two tokens to any position on the board. Along with that, the Dark House, uh, who I'll be assigning dice to, can take Lucky Charm tokens from me if I assign him a dice that's a three or a four. Now the way I earn more Lucky Charm tokens is by landing on a grid that I don't need, removing the tile, and placing it in my resource pool instead of on my player board. The way I win the game is I make it to the Abyss before the Phantom makes it to the Pleasant Isles, and I make it to the Abyss with a full ship. So let's go ahead and dive into this game. I'm sure you'll pick it up as I play. If you have any questions or rules clarifications or anything that I might have missed, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. That'll help me out, but it'll also help anyone else who's watching this playthrough out, just so I don't perpetuate something wrong. There's a good chance it'll do something wrong. I do something wrong fairly often, and nearly every day. So I'll go ahead and roll. I have a two, four, and three. Now I could re-roll or change those, but I'm not gonna do that yet. I have to assign one of each of these dice to the three ships. Now I don't wanna lose any of my lucky charms, so I'll assign the two to the dark house over here. I wanna get a five, so I'll assign the four to me, and I'll assign the three to the phantom. Now the way you resolve these is important. You start with the dark house. Two, so there's no consequences. Then you go to the Phantom, three. He moves three down and consumes or removes that crewman. I then go four. I take the five. Now because I have an open spot on my grid, I can add the five to my player's deck here. Now the important thing to note from this point on, every new tile I add has to connect to an existing tile. I can never break that chain. So I could add seven, three, eight, or one. So let's go ahead and collect them back up and roll the dice once more. Two, two, and two. I'll play that. Two going here. Two, oh, I flipped it. Two going to the phantom, two going to me. So resolve this. I don't lose any lucky charms. The phantom moves two down, removing that one token. And I move two down collecting that one crew token. Now the one is able to go on my player board because I have the five there, and I'll roll again. Let's see here. Four, four, and three, which means if I play this out, I will lose a lucky charm. So the question is, do I spend one lucky charm to reroll all the dice, or is that a gamble I want to take because I could collect the three, or I could collect the two, the two and seven, both of those could help me as well. I think I'm gonna spend one lucky charm to reroll all of these dice, so maybe I can get a smaller number to restrict the movement of the phantom slightly. There we are. So I'm gonna give two to the dark house, 
I'm going to give one to the Phantom to restrict his movement a bit, and two to myself, so I don't lose anything, because it's not a three or four. I go, the Phantom goes two down, removing that five, and I go two down, taking the seven, and playing it on my board, because it is connected to the five. So you kind of see how the game works now. Now there's expansions that can be added in. There's five of them total, and they do things like create atmospheric events. They create a showdown that happens when we cross paths. They add uh, more dice control mechanics to, uh, to your ship, so you can re-roll or re-roll again based on the numbers that you're seeking for. Um, there's also an expansion that adds, that transforms this into a moving grid, where you use this really beautiful uh, token here, and he actually moves down a line of cards that have different effects every single round. So there's a lot of customization you can do with this game. I'm playing the base game because I'm hoping I can win a game on camera. Again, we'll see if that's possible. So again, I'll roll the bones, take a look at what we got. One, two, and three. Now the two wouldn't be bad for me. The three would also finish off a track. I don't need the one, so there's no point for me assigning myself the three but I also really don't want the Phantom to have it. So here's what I'll do. Um, give a one here. I'll give a two to myself. I'm gonna give the Phantom a three. One doesn't lose me any luck charms. Three comes down here and consumes this number eight. And two, I come here and collect the three, which I am able to play on my player board. So we're not, we're not doing too bad. At least I don't think we are right now. Roll the bones again. One, two, and three again. The one doesn't do me any good. The nine doesn't do me any good. And the four doesn't do me any good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and spend two lucky charms. I'll remove those off the board. I'm gonna switch one of these dice all the way up to four. I'll assign the two to the dark house. I'll assign one to the phantom and I'll assign four to myself, moving all the way up to two. So we start here. I don't lose a lucky charm, or I don't lose a token, because it's not a three or four. Next, go to the phantom. He moves one, consuming the six. I skip all the way forward to this number two, which is something that I am able to go ahead and play on the board. Now, I need to keep my eye out for eights, and I have a few of them coming up. I have an eight one space away, and I have an eight four spaces away because I'd like to be able to get down into this chain. So we'll roll three, three, and four. Four spaces away would help me, but none of those, none of those are really what I'm looking for. Because I have it one and two, I'm gonna go ahead and spend, mm, I don't think I'm gonna spend that. So here's the dilemma I'm running into. If I spend my last Lucky Charm token, and I still have to assign the Dark House a three or a four, then I actually have to lose one token from my board, which means one of my crewmen that I've already placed on here will have to be taken away. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and assign these. I'll assign a three, a three, and give a four to myself. The three does resolve in me losing one of my Lucky Charm tokens. This three moves the Phantom down, removing a number four tile, and this four, brings me to the eight, which gets added to my player board. Now, one thing I wanna pay attention to is, do I need to pick up some lucky charms in order to complete? I'm looking for four, nine, and six. I have some nines here. I have one four right here, and I have one six right here. So it is possible for me to complete this round as long as I get the right dice. The problem is, if I don't get the right dice, I'll need at least two Lucky Charm tokens to reposition something exactly where I'd like it to be. Let's go ahead and roll the bones again. Let's see what we get. One, one, and four. Now, if I gave myself a four, I'd skip right over that six. If I gave myself a one, I would get a nine, which would complete something, but that would mean I'd have to give the Phantom a four. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Give the one to the Dark House, give the four to the Phantom, give one to myself. I have to start paying attention as well because I don't want the Phantom to get to the Pleasant Isles before me. Start with the Dark House, I don't lose a Lucky Charm or I don't lose a token since I don't have any Lucky Charms left. Then we're gonna go to the Phantom, 
Oh no. Well, the four still works, but the phantom comes here and consumes this nine. I then move past where the phantom is, and I get this four, which can go on my board. That almost was really bad. Let's roll again and see what we get. Three, one, and one. Three will give me a lucky charm token. I really need a six though. All right, I'm assigning one to the dark house, one to myself, three to the phantom. I don't lose a token because I don't have any lucky charms to spend. The phantom moves one, two, three, removes that eight. I move one, picking up this six and filling out my grid a little bit more. So the only thing I have left to do is to get far enough ahead on this track that I can pick up a nine and make it to the abyss before the phantom can make it to the aisles. Let's see if I can go ahead and win this game. Three, two, and two. I'll assign a two to the bleak house because I don't want to lose a token. Um, I'll assign the three to myself and two to the phantom. I don't lose a token. The phantom moves one, two, consuming one. I move one, two, three, picking up a seven, but I can't play it on my board, so it'll just become a lucky charm for me. Roll again. I got one, two, and two. I'll give two to the dark. I'll give two to the dark house. I'll give one to the phantom. I'll give two to myself. I don't lose a token again. Phantom moves one, consuming that space. I move one, two, taking this three and turning it into another lucky charm. Roll one more time. One, two, and three. Now I really want that one, so I'm gonna give it to myself so I can complete my ship. I'm gonna give two to the dark house so I don't lose a token and three to the phantom. So I move, so I resolve this, I don't lose a token. The phantom moves one, two, three, He's only three spaces away from defeating me, or four spaces away from defeating me. I move one, placing a nine on my board. I've now completed my crew. Now all I have to do is make sure that I get to the abyss before the phantom gets to the Pleasant Isles. Let's go ahead and roll and see what we come up with. One, one, and four. That is the perfect amount. One goes to the dark house, one goes to the phantom, Four goes to me. Dark House resolves. I don't lose a token. The Phantom moves one, only two spaces away from defeating me. And I move four all the way into the abyss with a full crew and I win the game. So that's how this game works. That's the gameplay, that's the flow. Now again, this is the entry level portion of the game. There, there are uh, expansions that get added in that really up the chaos and up the strategic elements of it. There are also uh, different ship layouts that make it a lot more complicated to finish off and complete your crew. But I'm glad I won. I mean, it counts for something. There's a lot of depth to this game and I will be doing a full expansion gameplay release down the road, so keep an eye out on my channel for that. I hope you enjoyed this Quackalope gameplay. If you did, please like and subscribe. I put a lot of work and effort into these videos and I do it for you. No, not George or Susan who are also watching this video or my grandmother Pat. I did this video just for you. Leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know any questions that you have about this game or if this video inspired you to go pick it up. I hope you're having a good day. Thank you for watching. Now get to the table and play some board games. We'll see you next time. Thank you.